In this episode, I machined the camdisc, the bearing block pin, and the follower for the mini flame heater engine project. Welcome to part 5 of the mini flame heater engine project. The parts I will be working on this time around are the cam disc, bearing block pin, and the follower. These are all steel parts. Let's start machining with the cam disc. This part will make the follower, valve, and valve rod reciprocate back and forth to allow the heat into the engine. Starting off in the high gear, the lathe cannot handle the pressure applied. Good thing I have the circuit breaker installed so the fuses are no longer consumed. Check out the video I made on replacing the fuse block with a circuit breaker. Shifting into low gear allows more aggressive machining without tripping the torque sensor or circuit breaker. Start out by lathing the largest diameter first, then progressively working my way down to the smallest diameter. This is the first machining project that I've been able to use the caliper DRO I mounted a few weeks back. It makes lathing a distance so much easier. The through hole on the cam disc calls for a 5mm diameter hole. I decided to use a 5mm drill bit as I do not have a reamer that size. Also a set screw will locate and tighten the disc to the crankshaft, so a loose or tight fit will not be that big of an issue. It does start to become an annoyance that the mini lathe cannot handle heavier cuts. 
Changing the spindle high, low gear is something that has to be done regularly pending the part being laid. The cam disc is now machined to size, the offset lobe on the cam now needs to be machined. I thought about this for a while, wasn't too sure how I'd perform the machining. I do not have an indexing table so I had to try another way. It came to me a few days before I was to machine this part. Why not glue a 1 to 1 ratio print of the drawing on the end, then mill and file the area to the profile. That was the approach I decided to take. With the cam disc low barrier roughed out, the next step was to bring it closer to the profile and smooth the surfaces. I started filing, but it was hard to control the depth of the filing, hold the file straight, and ensure the filing would follow the profile of the part. Spending some time thinking, I remember previously having seen how this could be done. Basically, a guide is made to go along with the part having the same profile. This allows the file to rest on both sides of the part and guide it to keep the file straight and make it easier to attain the correct profile without filing off too much material. I made two small rings, both 23mm outside diameter. For one, the bore was made to 19mm and the other 5mm. This allowed the cam disc to be sandwiched in the middle. Now when the file is placed on the material, it is easier to file the profile. The added guys didn't get all that hard. I thought it was 1045 steel shaft, but guessing it was mild steel. Otherwise, the file would just skate off the surface as it would be hard. Nonetheless, it worked. When I assemble the engine, I will use a Dremel tool and sand the surfaces. For now, I was able to get it very close to the cam profile required. Moving to the next part, the bearing block pin. Originally, the builder has this as two parts, a shaft and spacer. I decided to make it one piece. It required less work and I do not see the need for it to be two pieces. There is enough area for the follower to rotate without binding. In this clip, a friend was kind enough to lend his SLR camera. The only drawback was that it was difficult to keep in focus as I couldn't see the screen like my point and shoot camera. So I had to shoot the entire machining over as it was out of focus. Unfortunately my camera had a hard time focusing as well as the part was so small. At least the machining is a little clearer and you were able to see the operations performed.
the next operation was to drill a one millimeter hole through the shaft. I had done this before on the first part, but the drill bit had wandered and drilled at an angle. This time the drill bit went fairly straight. I had to set the belts on top to a higher RPM and therefore the motor had to wind up. When drilling small holes you want to take your time and ensure the chips are evacuating. I have drilled holes as small as ten thousandths of an inch and it can be a little frustrating and nerve wracking. So what happened? I had my mill wired for 110 volt service. I had to loosen the belts and slowly tighten to allow the water to wind up to speed. Otherwise the mill just kept popping the breaker. If I continue to perform small part drilling and milling operations, I will have to switch the machine to 220 volt to better handle the amps required to wind up to speed. The last operation on the bearing block pin was to lathe it to the correct length. Since it really isn't all that critical, I set my zero allowing about one millimeter distance from the drilled hole. The last part in this video is the follower. Since it is such a simple part I didn't create any footage, the outside diameter was already 6mm and I drilled a 5mm inside diameter hole. I used my iPhone to record the parting off from the shaft. After this I used a chamfer and broke each inside edge. The one side is longer than required for now. The diameter has a small step to allow for a press fit into the brass. Once the shaft is seated I will then mill it to match the brass face. I do not want to remove it as press fit on such small parts can easily become loose if removed and inserted frequently. That concludes this video. If you enjoyed the video please leave a comment below and be sure to like and subscribe to catch future videos. Again I appreciate all those who have subscribed. Thank you for watching.